In the last video, we talked about different framing methods. This time, we shall tackle another important issue, handling errors. As we've mentioned in previous videos, when a frame is received, it may contain an error. For instance, a single one was mistakenly received as a zero after its transmission. The second layer should handle errors, but how? There are two main approaches for handling errors, detection and correction. We shall start by describing detection and then talk about correction. When dealing with error detection, we're looking for a Boolean result, true or false. Is the frame valid or not? That is all. We don't wanna know where the error occurred. If the frame is invalid, we will simply drop it. So when the receiver receives a frame, she'll determine whether an error has occurred. If the frame is valid, she will read it. If the frame contains errors, the receiver should drop it. One method for error detection is using a checksum. A common implementation of a checksum is called CRC, cyclic redundancy check. We shall not trouble ourselves with the mathematical implementation of CRCs in the real world, but in order to understand the concept, let's implement a very simple checksum mechanism ourselves. Let's consider a protocol for transmitting 10 digits phone numbers between endpoints. This protocol is extremely simple. Each frame includes exactly 10 bytes, each one representing a digit. For example, a frame might include the following digits. Now, we shall add a checksum. Let's say that we add all the digits. So in this example, we would calculate 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 1, and all the way through 7. We would get 43. This would be our checksum value. Now, the sender won't only send the phone number, but also the checksum value right after it. So in this example, the sender would send... Now, as the receiver, I can do the same thing. I will read the phone number and calculate the checksum. I shall add the digits and get 43. Since I received the correct result, I assume that the frame is valid. What happens in case of an error? Let's say, for instance, that the digit 2 was replaced by an 8. Now, even though the sender sent the following stream, the receiver sees something a bit different. The receiver sees 555183456743. Now, when the receiver calculates the checksum, she adds all the digits and gets 49. Since this value is different from the checksum value specified in the original frame, 43, the frame is considered to be invalid. Are there problems with this method? Well, obviously there are. Consider, for example, what happens if there are two errors and instead of the following stream, the receiver gets the following. Even though the digits are not the same, the checksum will remain correct, and the frame will be regarded as valid. Real checksum functions, such as CRCs, are obviously much better implemented than the one in our example, but in extremely rare cases, such problems may occur. If you're interested in the implementation of CRCs, you can read more in the links I've provided in the comments below. Notice that using this kind of method, we don't know where the problem occurred, but only whether the frame is valid or not. If the checksum value is invalid, we assume that the frame is invalid and drop it. As mentioned earlier, detection is not the only way to handle errors. Another approach might be to find the error and correct it. How can that be achieved? An extremely simple way would be to transmit the data many times. Let's say three times. For example, the following stream would be transmitted as follows. So we basically sent the data three times. Now, in case of an error in one digit, the receiver can look at the other two digits and choose the one that appears two times out of three. So for instance, if we had an error here and the two was replaced with an eight, the receiver can say, oh, well, I have two, eight, and two, so it was probably two in the original message. Is this problematic? Well, in some rare cases, we might get the same error twice. So it's possible, even though quite unlikely, that two of the original twos 
have been received as eights. So while the sender sent this stream, this two was mistakenly read as an eight, and also this two here was received as an eight. Now, it looks as if the original message included an eight and not a two. What can we do in order to lower the probability of such scenario? The most simple solution would be to simply send the data even more times, let's say five times. So now we duplicate all the data and set it five times totally. Now let's say that two errors occurred and this two here was replaced with an eight and even this two was also received as an eight. Clearly it is very unlikely to get the same error twice but even in this case, we still get three times two, so the receiver can tell with a high probability that the original message contained a two rather than an eight. Now would be a good time to introduce the term overhead. When we say overhead, we basically mean data or time needed to convey the actual message. Let's first understand what this term means in general and then consider it in the context of handling errors. Let's say that I have a lesson to teach in my local university. My goal is to teach the lesson itself, which is also called the payload in that context. That is, the actual data or message I'd like to convey. In order to teach the lesson, or to convey the payload, I first have to physically get to the university. So I get out of my home, walk to the bus station, wait for the bus, take the bus, get off the bus, walk to the building, wait for the lesson to start, and only then do I actually get to teach the lesson. This entire process is overhead that I have to pay in order to deliver the payload, in this case, to teach the lesson. The same applies in computer networks. Our payload is the data, and there is always some overhead associated with sending it. In the context here, sending the data three times, as suggested earlier, it means that for every byte of payload, we have two bytes of overhead. The term overhead is an important term in computer networks, and we shall use it frequently in future lessons. As a general note, in one of our very first lessons, I said that the world of computer networks is loaded with terms, I will therefore try to introduce the terms in context throughout the course, as I've just done with the term overhead. We'll repeat every important term multiple times in various contexts. Back to our discussion of error handling, we said that sending the data three times, as suggested earlier, means that for every byte of payload, we have two bytes of overhead. If you want better accuracy and decide to send the data five times, then for every byte of payload, we actually have that's right, four bytes of overhead. That's a lot. Consider error detection on the other hand. In our example protocol for sending phone numbers, how much overhead did we have? Recall that for every 10 digits phone number, that is 10 bytes, we included a two digits checksum value. In other words, we had two bytes of overhead for 10 bytes of payload. It is clear that in our example, error detection yields much smaller overhead in comparison to error correction. There are obviously much better ways to achieve error correction with high accuracy than to simply send the data so many times, but they are more complicated and out of scope for this video. Even with very complicated error correction techniques, they still require lots of overhead when compared to error detection. Notice that except for the bytes sent as overhead in case of error correction, error detection is much simpler. So, when would we prefer error correction? One case might be when we have a one-way link, that is, a network where we can only transfer data in one direction. For example, let's say we have a secret agent that we need to send a message to. Our agent knows that she needs to look up at the sky at exactly midnight, and she'll see a series of flashes indicating the secret message. The secret agent cannot reply, or her location and identity will be revealed. In addition, we don't want to send the message over and over again, as we don't want to draw much attention and to make it harder for someone to intercept the message. 
In this case, we definitely want our agent to receive the exact message that we've sent. Consider that we want to send her the message, do not place the bomb. We don't want to risk the unfortunate scenario of her reading the message as do now place the bomb due to an error. If we use error detection, the agent might be aware that the message she received is invalid in case of an error, but she won't be able to tell us that she needs us to send the message again. As we want our agent to be able to read our message correctly and without sending any data back to us, error correction is preferred. So one way link is one case where we prefer error correction. What about other cases? Sometimes we just can't send the data again, perhaps because it has been erased from the memory of our machine. That is, the data is deleted right after it's being sent. In this case, we obviously prefer error correction, as sending the data again, as we would do with error detection, is just impossible. Also, if sending the data again is possible, but extremely expensive, we may prefer error correction. For example, if we send a message to the moon, say, with a spaceship, it might be really expensive to send it over again in case of an error. Using error correction, we send the data only once, and the receiver should be able to deal with it, even if an error occurred. In general, we prefer error correction when retransmitting the data is costly or impossible. When would we prefer error detection? Well, in case we can retransmit the data, we usually prefer error detection, since it comes with very little overhead compared to error correction, especially when sending the data is relatively cheap. For example, in the internet, if an error occurs when we send a frame, no problem, we can simply send it again. The protocols that we will meet in this course will thus rely on error detection rather than error correction for handling errors. Note that it doesn't mean that error detection is simply better. It just better fits the internet than error correction. As mentioned before, error correction is preferable in other cases. Now would be a good time to make sure we understand what we have learned, even in some previous videos. So first, how can we frame the following sequence of bytes? Assume that the flag byte is AB and the escape character is EC. I encourage you to pause the video and try it yourselves. So we started with the flag byte AB, followed by the data byte 4A, then we had another AB in the data, so we had to use an escaping character, so we use EC, and then the data AB. Then in the data we had EC, so we had to use the escape character again, so we have EC, EC, then back to the original data 1, 1, and finally a flag byte AB to end the frame. Next question, what do we use in the internet? error detection or error correction? Why? Well, we use detection since it is simpler and we send less redundant data. In this video, we discussed various methods for handling errors. We looked at error detection, where we only know whether a frame is valid or not. We also considered error correction, where the receiver can restore the correct value of an error in a frame. We also introduced the term overhead, we then understood why we use error detection in the internet rather than error correction. In the next video, we shall meet our first real-life protocol, 802.3 Ethernet. Stay tuned!